All right, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the next uh, Philly Young Mido Temple Hop Keto Stay at Home Workout video. Uh, today we're going to be taught by special guest instructor Mindy, uh, who wants to do throws. Uh, we don't need any special equipment other than maybe some of the usual light, medium weights, water bottle, towel, all that sort of thing, and a smiling attitude. Yes, well, you know what? Come with workout with whatever attitude you got, and hopefully by the time you finish, you'll be in a happier, better place. Uh, so. Uh, just quick announcements though, um, starting in a couple more videos, we're going to start assuming that the people watching and joining and participating in our workouts have some sort of mats on the floor, just enough for some light rolls and falls, nothing uh, big, even if it's just a couple of uh, rugs you can drag, um, but hey, mats are a little bit good for even just doing groundwork and throws drills and things like that, just you're not bruising up knees and toes and all that sort of thing. Um, so if you can get some mats, if you want to get one of those dummies, uh, you can get one of those too, sure. Um, or the uh, elastic bands that I've got hanging it up, those are great too. You can get the bands for like 25 bucks. You can get the dummy for anywhere from like 70 to $400 or $600. Go the cheap ones, we're just using them for some nice drills. So um, stick around, I mean, you'll be right here with a great workout on throws. So stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, we'll all get through together. Thank you. Okay. So, today's topic is going to be birthday throws. My birthday is tomorrow, and our custom is to throw the honoree the number of times as the number of years they're turning. So, uh, plus one for good luck. So, for class today, we're going to warm up. We're going to quickly uh, blast through a bunch of reps or a bunch of different throws, and then finish it off at the end with just each of us on our own virtually doing birthday throws, which would be 37 uh, throws and just cycling through the ones you know. So that's our menu for today. So we're gonna start with warming up. I'm just gonna start quickly with, kind of let's do our usual fatigue jumping jack. Go for it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, one, two, three, two, three, three, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, one, nine, fifty. All right. From here, we're going to uh, go straight into our sit up back arch push up uh, circuit. We get on the floor. We're going to do. Obviously, you know, set up of your choice. I'm going to start with feet up crunches. Good account every five or so, just so I can, you know, use my diaphragm for the sit up. All right, so foot up, feet up crunches are feet are up and you reach for your toes. All right, I'm going to count every five for 20. One, five. 10, 15, 17, and 20. All right, back arches. I just like our normal garden variety back arches. So I'm gonna be doing, you could do either side, you could be doing Superman's. Now if you're out, I'm gonna do 20. Again, I'll be counting every five so you can Count on your own. One, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty, and ten push ups. I can count these guys. Up and one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. Back to your sit-ups. You're going to be doing leg lifts. I'll start out off giving a tempo and then go down to every five for 20. And one, two, three, four, five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. All right. Sit up, push up, or uh, back or sit. Again, we go side to side. I like to do them symmetrically. 20, I'll count you for every five. And one, five, 10, 15, 20, and push up. And push up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And last circuit through. I guess last step through the circuit. Sit up again. Um, I'm going to do bicycles. I'm not going to count for you guys, but I'm going to count. Right, left as one. All right, so I'm going to do that 20 times. I can't talk aloud while doing that. So we'll meet back up after we all do 20 of our favorite sit ups. All right, and go. Two, three, All right, last set of back arches. Now for 20. And you know what? Since one of us is getting a beach vacation, we're going to do some shark. So we're going to be swimming around like this in our imaginary ocean. And I'm going to count, shout shark. And you're going to start swimming really, really fast. And if I say beach, you get to rest for a moment. I'm going to say shark. Swim really fast and beat. All right? Yes. Yep. So we're going to do this all together until I uh, stop us safely finally on the beach. All right. So we're going to all start with shark. Yeah. Really fast, shark. Swim faster. And beat. Yes. Shark. Yes. And beach. Shark. I want to be another shark. The beach is almost there, almost there, almost there. And beach. All right. <laughs> and some push ups, 10 push ups. Nice beach push up for your beach muscles. And one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's do some stretch kicks. We're going to do straight up and down stretch kicks. Back leg goes straight up and down. However high you can do it without wrenching your back forward, keep your shoulders, shoulder blades squeezed together, back and down and take the use kicks as low as you need to. All right, stretch kick. 
65 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, switch legs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, out to in stretch kick, starting with your right leg back, let's do 5 on each side, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, switch legs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in the outstretched hip, right side, starting with the right leg, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, switch legs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right, take that out a little, all right, let's uh, do a little brief stretching, um, especially when we want to get our shoulders and our legs, um, because you know, throws are arguably whole body exercises. So, start a little head rotation. Directions. Left and right. Sit down. Shoulder circle forward. And elbows. Hold on. Just your forearms. Just your wrist. Just your wrist backwards. Just your forearms back. Just your shoulders backwards. Elbows. Full arms. Chain breaker. Squeezing those shoulder blades together on that back swing. Catch one arm, pull it across your chest, reach it in, keep the shoulder up full. Then you sit back behind you, sit the tricep. Other arm across your chest, reach it in. Reach that back behind you, sit your tricep. Front foot, pivoting on the ball of the foot. Hit circle. Torso rotation. Put them on the spot. Move your torso around. And 
knee circle. Bend those knees, gently walk them up. And sit straight. Big up, ankle circle. Up and down. Grab your ankle. Trying to switch quads. And release. Left leg up, ankle circle. down. Grab your ankle, pull it behind you, switch quads. And release. Reach your arms overhead, stretching out one side of your body to the other. And reach it all the way as high as you can and swan dive down into the fold. Hands on your shins, flatten your back, flip the front of your head away from your tailbone, tilt your tailbone towards the sky, and fold again. Plant your hands, step back into high plank. Low plank, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. And here, bend one knee, then the other, dive into the stretch. Raise your right leg, two legged dog. Open your hip to the right, bending your knees, pointing your right knee to the sky, your right toes to the ground. And bring the leg back down. Left leg up, stick your leg a dog. And open your hips to the left. Left knee pointing to the sky, left toes pointing to the ground. And back to down dog. Widen your feet out, about two shoulder widths wide, and down the center. Walk your hands to your left foot. And walk your hands to your right foot. Gonna come up into side kick stretch right, right quad, aiming to parallel with the ground, aiming back over your left leg. Come up on the ball of your left foot for a crescent lunge. And side kick stretch to the left. Left quads getting parallel to the ground. Then you back over your right leg. All right, someone has a lot of chatter in the background. <laughs> if you could mute yourself, that would be helpful. And turn to your left, your second lunge. And sit down, butterfly, holding your chest over your feet. Looking at your 
feet and wondering where all of your mat calluses have gone. Keep your right leg down, toss your left leg over, head to the your chest, and a straight lower that left hip to the ground. And twist to your left, crossing your elbow over your knee. And with your legs. Left leg down, right leg over, hug your right knee to your chest. And twist to your right, crossing your elbow over your knee. And release. All right, everybody, grab a quick drink of water. Sweat off. Okay, so we're going to start um, with hip throws. And what we're going to do for all these is I'm going to demo them, and then we're going to do um, probably uh, 10 each side and then move on to the next one, unless there are a lot of questions. All right. And I'm just going to, I'm going to start with hip throws and go through several hip throw variants. Um, then I might skip around for the sake of time. So we're not doing all of them. My categories that I have are hip throws, hand throws, shoulder throws, reefs, sacrifice throws, foot sweeps, leg takedowns, wheel throws, and race fails. In this category, maybe, but we'll probably have plenty for fun today. Okay, so we're going to start with um, our basic hip throw, uh, which um, is pretty similar to Ogoshi and Judo. And so what we're going to do, if you have socks, and feel free to use them. I don't have them. I have the imagination of feet. Um, and so what we're going to do going to get in our standard judo grip on our invisible partner. Hand on sleeve, hand on collar. And for hip throw, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, for today, we'll step forward. You could also step back to off balance, but we're going to step forward to off balance. And I'm going to let go of the collar and grab around the belt. Turn, getting low, and offload. Um, setting my legs and pulling my arms across my body at the same time. So one more time for Ogoshi, I'll do it the other way. So pull in. This is the sleeve arm. I'm going to wrap my collar arm around the back as I take my second step. And then to offload, I'm going to straighten my knees and bring my, both arms across my body. Questions before we get started on the next. I see no one approaching their computer. So we can do 10 reps each side. Um, sure. I'll count. Maybe I'll start timing later. Okay. Hit throw. And let's go. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Questions oh. before we do the other side. Since my computer's all the way across the room, I can't see any of you. So. When you step in, are you stepping across their body? Or just yes. Of... Okay, let me get some feet so you can see. Uh, 
Okay. So if my if this hand is under sleeve, this hand is under collar. I'm stepping my left foot is under sleeve. I'm stepping my right foot across to be toe to toe with their right toe, which is on their sleeve. I'm grabbing the right sleeve. So I'm stepping across. So facing you, it looks like this. However, if we were doing a stepping back off balance, it would be the same side that is stepping. So if we're stepping forward, we're stepping across, because the reference throw was this. And now you can see where my feet are right in between theirs. Whereas if I were stepping back, I'd be stepping back. Okay, thanks. So essentially you're rotating your body towards that sleeve. If their sleeve were no longer attached to their body, you'd just be committing to that circle. So that's your mnemonic if you're trying to reverse engineer it later. All right. Great question. Great question to ask early on Thursday. All right. Other side. So I'm grabbing their left sleeve with my right hand. Same throw. All right. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Question. We're next going to move on to another hip serve variant. So your questions will be pertinent to the next one as well. Okay. Sweeping hip throw. Just like we were just doing, but on one leg. Not quite just like. Okay, so sweeping hip throw. Got my same grip, my left hand on their right sleeve. I'm stepping across and wrapping my arm around their head. And then from here, I'm going to back step really deep. And there are two ways to do this. You can either paint a circle with your right toes, or you can do a reach like me, a reach, if you really want to toss them. Um, I prefer, or I guess my default is that changing the circle. So again, the other side here, step in, and as I back step, I'm going to wrap around her head here. Again, I'm extending my support leg and bringing my arms across my body as I sweep out their legs. Question. All right, sweeping hip throw. Do 10 each side. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and ten. All right. So one thing you might have noticed, or you might not have noticed, but might be good for you to notice, is the deeper you back step, the easier your balance is. You may have noticed that I'm falling when I do my throws, so I'm falling in the direction of this row. I'm not teeter-tottering to either side. So if worse comes to worse, I throw the person, I either land on them or I roll over them rather than losing control of everything. Questions before the next side? All right, other side, same throw. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. And you might notice your five is on this, and that's all your practice. Eight. Nine, ten. All right. Questions before we go on. We're going to do spring hip as our last of our hip throws. We're probably going to skip uh, uki goshi um, and the lifting pulling hip throw for the sake of time. But questions on skipping hip before we go to springing hip? All right, so springing hip has a lot of the same idea as scooping hips in that, and we're going to step across. Um, step across, we're going to back step deep in, but we're going to be committing our weight to that back step. And then from here, instead of hitting a circle with this leg, we're going to come up. Maybe I'll reset this so you can, hmm. Here, back step, and then from here I'm going to take this leg, and I'm going to make essentially like a triangle with it. Triangle uh, is going to either be a very sharp one and come up and uh, hit their thigh, or it can be more of a uh, loose triangle and hit farther down their leg. Either it's uh, fine. So you're going to step across, back step, and then you're going to bring up this leg triangle, and you're essentially going to uh, rotate your body forward and across as you lift their leg with this triangle. One more time. Again, back stepping really deep will make this easier to balance. Control your fall so that you fall consistently in the direction of the throw. Questions? Spring hip. All right, we'll try it on one side, and then if you have questions, you can ask before we go to the other side. All right. Spring hip throw. Uh, one side, starting with 10. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Questions before we go to the next slide. And again, if you're just having too much trouble envisioning what we're doing, feel free to go back to our basic hip throw and practice that. Because everything you do wrong on a basic hip throw, you're going to do wrong here. <laughs> All right. Other side spring hip throw. Ten. And one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Grab a sip of water. Any questions on any of those three tippers before we move on? Okay. We're going to go on to hand throws. These are more intermediate advanced throws than we've been doing. So I feel like if you really want something more basic, go back to some of our previous videos uh, and yeah, go for those reads. We've been doing them all summer. Let's spice it up a little. So we're going to start, um, start with floating drops. I think we've done in this class. One of the other young widow classes. Okay. Let's set this 
So, floating drop. Standard judo grip. You're going to take a step back here with your, so I'm grabbing the left sleeve, or I'm grabbing your sleeve with my left arm. I'm going to take a step back with my left leg. And I'm going to keep my hands in front of me, so not leaving them behind. Take a step back. And I'm going to keep turning my hips in the direction that the uh, opponent is facing. And I'm going to come down and bringing their sleeve first and then their collar in a circle. Again, have their sleeve in my left arm. Pull back, take a step back with my left leg. Keep turning to my left, come down, and then sleeve arm, circle, collar arm, circle. So it's like I'm fishing. I have to complete the circle with both hands, or it's going to be a lot of drop and no float. One more time. Questions, floating drop. All right, do 10 on the side. And one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Questions before the other side. All right. Other side. Floating drop. Ten throws. And one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Questions before we go into forward body drop, which is very, very similar. So if you have questions here, you can have questions there. All right. Forward body drop. So floating drop, forward body drop are hand throws, which is most exemplified on floating drop that we just did, because the only thing that's throwing them is their connection to our hands. We're not throwing them over our hips, we're not throwing them over our shoulders, we're not tripping them with our legs, right? So, floating drop that we just did, again, is I'm stepping out of their way. So you can see their feet. I'm stepping out of their path and bringing them forward and around. Forward body drop. So if my person standing right here, my person sitting right here is similar to that with the arms, but I'm going to have in, what I think of as a little extra insurance for tripping them with my legs. If I do a beautiful hand throw, I don't need that insurance. If I don't do a beautiful hand throw, the trip really helps. Um, so I'll show it from a couple angles. So uh, forward body drop, you step in, I usually prefer stepping back, but I'll just be consistent for a back today. Step in. And here we're going to turn and then step out and do that fly fishing sleeve hand, collar hand in a circle. I'll do it so you can see my body facing you. I put it here where my sandals are. I'm going to step in. Step around and then step out so far. Step in, step around, and then stick this leg out as my hands come over. I want my hips to be out of their way. So I don't want my hips to be blocking where their body is. I want this leg 
to be right in front of their legs if they try to step forward instead of essentially do a floating drop. So again, step, step, my hips are off to the side slightly. Third step brings this knee facing the ground so that if they land on it, it's not breaking my knee. It might just be banging my kneecap, which I prefer to cutting all those ligaments. So here, hands go. Another angle, step in, step, step. Questions? Okay. Forward body drop, 10 each side. Questions in between the sides. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Questions. I do have a question. Getting, uh huh. Um, what is? I know it's all kind of idealized because you're not a partner. What's an ideal ending kind of position for your arms here? Um, you've rotated them into the ground, but it is it's more of like a a forward motion ultimately right i don't know if i'm asking that well okay so uh, i think i get what you're saying because the foot throw we're moving our hands across our body whereas in the these hand throws it's this like forward fly fishing type is that what you're asking yes yeah okay um i guess the simple answer is that here's their sleeve here's their collar their sleeves, so their arms coming here, their heads coming here, and I just bring them out and back in to flip them over. So, so they, here. They, they wind up, so they do these circles facing the way I'm facing, or I guess facing the way those um, uh, person beans are facing. So their body is now lying here. They are face, they're somewhat face up, maybe up on their sides and holding one of their arms. Um, their head is here. I have their arm right here. Okay. I still have their collar. Their collar face. Does okay. that answer Thank your you. question? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. One arm shoulder throw. Start here. I have my left arm on their sleeve. I'm going to pull and take my off balance step. I'm going to take my right arm and I'm going to essentially shoulder check their armpit and then hook their armpit in my bicep. Trying to give, like right here on them, a nice good bruise. Yeah. Hand on my sleeve, step in, shoulder check their arm, cinch in that bicep. So now I'm going to be controlling them instead of their sleeve and their collar, I'm controlling them with their, sort of the end of their sleeve and their shoulder. So don't leave this behind, this is your, Point of control. So here I'm going to take my second step and drop low as I step. So I need to get under their shoulder. And from here I'm going to keep pulling this forward and up, bring it across my body as I offload, much like the hip. Keep another angle. So spin here. So I've stepped around, gotten low. Straighten my legs and bring those hands around to offload. Questions on one arm shoulder first. All right, let's see 10 each side. And one, two, three, four. Five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good pod workout, even without another body. Cool. Questions before we go to the other side. All right. So things to work on. And you can work on on your own. I know a lot of the relative body positions are a little difficult uh, to manage without that feedback of another body. But really, try to get that deep squat because it's only your own weight at this moment. So if you can't get down to that deep squat on your own weight. It's not gonna happen with another person. Even though, you know, ideally you're not lifting your whole weight, most of their weight is past you here. So like, if I'm really great, then it's just like your thighs here and I'm not even supporting your whole weight. So this is a great time to practice, you know, those deep knee bends, uh, if your knees permit. All right, other side. And one. Two, three, four, five, six. Remember, if you're deep knee bending, you gotta land in that bend. You can't, you can't land here and then bend. That's too late. All right, seven. Oops. Eight, nine, and ten. All right. Questions on that? I just pretend it's going to be our last single throw rep review before we go on to birthday. Questions? No, just getting water. Okay. So, my idea for birthday throws is each of us um, is going to do 37 throws. If you only know one throw, you do 37 same throw. I usually go back and forth on each side. <laughs> you know, two throws, you know, you get the job. I will call out the throws I am doing, I'm going to go down my list of 33 throws and then circle back um, until I'm at 37. And you are free to do that those throws with me, um, or you're free to do a different. Thing. All right. <laughs> All right. Number one, hit throw. Ozoshi. I'll just did this. What's up? Two, hip throw, ukigoshi. Three, sweeping hip throw. Four, bringing hip throw. Five, lifting, pulling hip throw. Six, loading drop. Seven, forward body drop. Eight, Uchimata. Nine, one arm shoulder throw. Ten, two arm shoulder throw. Eleven, wrong side slash collar side shoulder throw. So you're going to go to the side where you're holding the collar. Twelve. Dropping shoulder throw. Any of those three. Thirteen. Major outer reach. Fourteen. Minor outer reach. Fifteen. 
15 minor out I just did my inner. Yeah. Uh, inner, yes. Minor inner reach. Actually, I just did major inner reach. All right, I just did major, and I'm gonna do minor. You can do the opposite. <laughs> other, other inner reach, or other, yeah, other minor reach. Major inner reach. I just did minor inner reach. So we have done all four reach. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sacrifice throw, stomach throw. Wind surfer. Ukiwaza, which is floating technique. If you don't know it, you don't know it. <laughs> the name's not picked up. All right, we have some rear sacrifice throws. We do uh, valley drop. Yeah. And a suplex. A really strange to start from standard judo grip. So go think about that later. Okay. Uh, foot sweeps, round number 22, Deashi Barai. Shh. 23, Sasai Surikomi Ashi. Shh. 24, Hiza Garuma. Shh. Shh. All right. Uh, leg takedowns. So 25, single leg takedowns. 26, double leg takedowns. 27, ankle pick. 28. All right, they're on to wheel throws. 28. Shoulder wheel or kata garuma. Twenty nine, dropping shoulder wheel. Uh, Thirty, arm bar wheel. And then thirty one, I have a bit of that over my hips, like I do sixteen step. Um, Case up armbar fireman. And then so 31 is shoulder height. It can be a lot easier on your imaginary partner than a real partner, especially if your real partner's short. So shoulder height, armbar, wheel. All right. Right bales. Number 32, a front right bale, however you define front right bale. And rear right sail. How do you find rear right sail? All right. So I'm going to circle back to number one through four again for 34 through 37. <clears throat> I'm going to do them on my left side. Feel free to do the same. Ogoshi. Uh, 36. Uki. Oh, wait. Five, 35, Uki Goshi. 36, sweeping hip. 36. And my good luck one to make this a really nice one. 37, springing hip. I know it's a big ass on your, on your offside. Thank you guys so much. The other thing I was thinking of was, oh, you guys could all these throws and I could just do 37 falls, but then I didn't want to do air <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what you guys chose. Happy birthday, so, Cindy. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy Thank birthday. you, guys. And that is it for today's class. Thank you so much. Being here. Uh, thank you very much, Mindy, for running us through 
uh, not only a bunch of uh, good intensive learning on some throws, but then following up real fast with 33 different throws done for a 37 total. If you had enough time, you could double it and do 74 throws because, you know, she took enough time. So you upper ranks, double it, double it, double it. Of course, it's too late now because now you're in the ending, so it's too late. <laughs> Anyhow, hey, hopefully you've got a good feeling uh, thinking about birthdays and celebrating with people even if we can't be together. That's what we're here for. We're just trying to get through this all together. So stay happy, stay healthy, uh, and we'll see you next time. So thank you very much. Have a good evening or afternoon or morning. Sorry. All right. <laughs>